This is gonna be real heavy. This is gonna be technical. This is the director's cut seriously of the mini fly. But I just have to get it out. I had to connect the USB cable to the device because I so much want to show you how we did all this magic that you probably already saw on YouTube. How this controller is effectively, you know, a Swiss knife that does just everything. You can use buttons to adjust values up and down because they are four-way buttons and they detect presses on the sides. And that's really, really awesome. And the perspectives are just endless. And the best thing is that it's all configurable because of Unisketch, the operating system we run on our controllers that enables you to go beyond all the defaults. So our controllers will have defaults when you get them. They will be user-friendly. They will work out of the box. We want to give you a controller that just works five minutes after you received it. But we also want to make sure that you are not unhappy one week after when you want to tweak. So, if you are into the mood of tweaking, welcome to this video, because here we will tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak. Now, um, I think maybe, probably, we need to recap a little bit about what this controller does. And let's take just a closer look of it. Uh, first of all, uh, just check out the form factor, by the way. It's really nice, uh, 10 degree angle tilt, if you didn't notice. On the back side, we have uh, plugs. We have USB. This is for the programming we're doing right now. Uh, if we want to upload a new firmware, and uh, here we have PoE, meaning Ethernet connection, and power. This is the DC plug. We don't need the DC plug if we have a POE switch. And that's really, really cool. Because uh, with the POE switch, we have power and signals over one cable. And we can take the USB plug out under normal operating uh, circumstances. Now, the ATEM switcher software is open here. It's connected to an ATEM switcher. So uh, as I press this one, we can see this is a program preview row. But if I press the shift key here, I toggle between uh, some alternatives. They are slightly differently colored. And I did that on purpose. So I can see that I now have access to sources 7, 8, 9, and 10, which are labeled differently. And I have a media player 1 and 2, which I colored differently by a slight red tone. Now, let's take a look at this. Well, uh, first, um, yeah, how did we do these things? Um, let's go to the configuration page. So from the Skyhoy firmware app, I pressed the online configuration button and I had this website coming up. So here we have my mini fly. You can see that this is the Atom Pro audio uh, configuration. We have an Atom switcher device core installed. And in section three, let's just see what is in section three. If I hold down shift key and press these six buttons, I get uh, the configuration for those six buttons up here. And you see that uh, normally uh, button number one would be um, uh, source number one, input one or input seven, input two or input eight, input three or input uh, nine and so forth. If we go down here, we see that we have media player one and we also see why the button is red because I added a system local color and set it to row. So essentially you have like 17 or 15 different colors, which are default colors we offer. Uh, they are sufficiently distinct to um, uh, be able to, uh, that you can see the difference. If you place them next to each other, you will be able to see the difference between those colors. This is why we helped you by defining 17 colors that are distinct. And we put a rose color on those two media player one and two buttons. So they were easy to identify. Now, why would those four other buttons have a milky white color? That is because in section three, we have defined that in this section, if we are in the shift state, we use the color called cream. So it's not just going to be white, but it's going to be cream colored when we are in shift level one. Great. So uh, what does this local shift register mean anyway? Register B. Okay, I'll get back to that. I think I'll just leave that for a moment. But now we have seen why do we have a different color when we press the shift key? Good. So uh, let's go to the auto key uh, and auto cut key. You, uh, you'll see right here that if I press um, the cut, then uh, we uh, basically have a cut action when I press the cut key. But if I press the upper edge, I have an auto transition. Let's go to the ATEM software so you can see it. Auto transition when I press that edge, auto, and cut, 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 cut. How did we do that? Now let's go back to the configuration interface and press the cut key. 
we use a um, modifying behavior called system transfer four-way behavior. What it does is that it will um, help us to uh, utilize the different uh, edges we can press on such a button. Because in the default case, um, a button, even though it's a four-way button, meaning that you can detect presses on all these different sides. Oh, by the way, how do you know if a button is a four-way button? I think uh, if you open the serial monitor, yeah, okay, so you see those, those that number you see right after uh, HWC19 down, it tells you, if you see that number, it means that it has four edges it can detect presses on, and actually the number one that you see in those uh, ones and zeros indicate which edge it was. So that's a little bit technical, but it's a way for you to identify four-way buttons, because it's not all our controllers that has them. Some of them have, in this case, all of them has. So, no problem. Let's go back to the configuration, because um, the, the behavior, uh, transform four-way behavior that I put into this configuration, it will make sure that only the press on the lower edge will be passed down to the next action. So I essentially I define when I press only the down edge, I want a cut to happen, okay? So if I press the side on the button, nothing happens on the side. Let's go so you can see the side. Nothing happens on the side, but if I press the lower edge, I will have a cut on the controller. Good. So, uh, then we have the next one, transform four-way behavior. Uh, pass only up. It means if I press the upper edge, then what happens then? It will pass a button press onto the auto action in the ATEM switcher. Great. Good. So, now you have seen transform four-way behavior. It gets even better or worse, depending on how you view it. Now, what you see here is the action that is intended to operate the shift key. So the shift key works in the way that if you press the lower edge, you will uh, change shift register B. Do you remember section three, register B right there? If I go to the shift key, you see that register B is exactly the register I am changing. I'm toggling level uh, one on and off when uh, we uh, press the lower edge on this button. I am changing register B. So what happens for the other things? So first of all, if you look up here, I give it a blue color, then I have a transform behavior that says block up down. It means that um, uh, I am basically taking away yeah up down presses and, and that leaves uh, left right presses. I then um, tell the system that I want to force this button to not just send a button press, when I press the left and right edge, I want it to work as an encoder. And um, so I use the force um, hardware component type to be a pulsed type. This is, uh, what, what are the options? Options are binary, pulsed, analog, and speed. Now, uh, binary is like a button on off. Pulsed is like an encoder, click, 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 to left or right side. So it sends pulses, positive and negative pulses. And when I use this um, uh, this uh, action, force uh, hardware component type to be pulsed, a four-way button will respond as if it was an encoder. So when I press the edges, the left and right edge, it's gonna send encoder pulses onto the next action, which is shift level up to level three. So this is exactly what will happen. It will work like if I had an encoder, and I turned the encoder and it would go from zero to three and back again or, or turn over so that goes back to zero. Uh, that's really what happens here when I press the edges of the button. And uh, if you wanna see it, I press the edges of the button. You can see that I'm basically cycling through the different shift states that will enable uh, those uh, different actions we have up here. Okay. So finally, uh, you may also remember, or you can just see it here, that if I press the upper edge, I have a uh, feature that hijacks the displays. So these displays will now temporarily show what these buttons do. And also I am toggling video metering or audio on off um, monitoring on these LED bars sitting right here. Now, uh, if you wanna know how this has been done, we can uh, take a look at it because it's kind of the next thing that happens. After I have um, changed the shift level, I am forcing the hardware component type back to uh, binary. Then I am saying I want I, I want to pass only up presses on, when I hit the upper edge. 
then I call an action called alternative display. And alternative display is something hard coded on each controller. If it has uh, buttons like these, which are not associated with the display, often the alternative display feature will allow you to hijack displays from a different part of the controller to work for those um, buttons or hardware components that doesn't have a display. And that's what we enable right here for as long as we hold the button. And then uh, you can also see I have a different action, namely shift level one, which I'm toggling on and off for the shift register called A. And that is the register I am using for exactly those uh, devices. So uh, if you look here at section two, you can see register A, local shift register A is the one I'm using for this whole section of um, LED bars. Uh, I'm also setting uh, some uh, color magic so that I have, uh, I really like this combination with the uh, spring uh, green uh, color and the cyan color right there. And this is what is enabled by this local color action. So you also see that you have another feature and the great thing about all these new uh, elastomer buttons and uh, uh, RGB LED backlight that you have powerful ways of color coding your controller. Uh, quite often you can color code a whole section. If you look for those section um, uh, elements on the controller configuration, they are often used to uh, paint a whole section of buttons in the controller on the controller with a particular color. And now you see it used even here for the upper section, section one, which has um, different color schemes depending on the function. So uh, on shift level uh, zero, we have purple. On level one, we have purple. Then on level two, we have cyan. And then on um, level three, we have uh, amber. And um, that totally corresponds with the uh, colors you see here. So this, um, this is level uh, zero. Uh, so we have the purple over here. Those colors are overridden for those actions individually then. But so the basis is purple. And then we get to the audio section, which is all cyan. And then to the macro section, which is amber colored. Okay. Ooh, yeah. I think we may now take a look at how these buttons are configured. So um, in fact, there's one thing I want to admit here. <clears throat> if I had to do this over again, I would probably use states. So uh, states is a different way to organize your controller. You can use shift states, uh -huh. not shift states. Um, forget about that. You can use shift levels and you can use states on your controller to uh, build menus or basically divide behavior in different ways. And then you can even use different shift registers and state registers as well. And um, when I started configuring this one, I opted for shift levels. Um, so I'm not going to explain you what states are. I'm just going to say that this might not be the most typical way of configuring a controller for such complex behavior we have right here. So one of the other configurations we have for this controller will actually use states, which would be the more natural way of doing it. So what we can explain what this does. And um, as you already know, when I press the shift key on the edges, it's going to uh, count up the shift levels from zero up to three and then turn over to zero again forth and back. So if you look at how each of these buttons are coded, you see that uh, in the default shift level zero, we are adjusting auxiliary one black. Is that true? Let's take a look here. If I go um, here, you see auxiliary one. Yes, I can adjust auxiliary one when I press this button. Good. So then it says or if we go to the next shift level, that would be one. It's adjusting auxiliary two. Is that true? Let's go to the next one. There, two bars. Uh huh. Okay. So auxiliary two bars. Great. So, or it says, if I go to level number two, first transform the four way behavior so it blocks up and down, then adjust audio volume, then pass only down and toggle audio on and off. In other words, when I go to this one, when I press the edges, you will have encoder action. It will turn the volume up and down. And if I press the lower edge, it's going to turn audio on and off for that audio channel. If you want to see the magic because you didn't see the other video, just check out this channel. See what happens. I turn it on and off. You see it right down here on and off when I press this button repeatedly. And if I press the edges, you see I'm turning audio up and down. I can also hold it down so that it's repeating itself, works nicely. 
Yes, thank you. All on a button. I think that's so fascinating. Really. Now, hey, it was about configuration, so let's not get lost in all that cool stuff, but get on to the fourth level, which is play macro. Basically, just play macro one, toggle on off. That's pretty easy, and that's what's happening right here. So all the other buttons are basically the same. You can see it is the same pattern we are observing on these buttons, although on the later buttons here we have uh, color-coded it differently, so basically overriding the color with the different one because it's a different function and so on. You can study all that stuff yourself, but this is Uniscape. This is four-way buttons. This is how you can configure really super complex behavior that will give you a very neat and user-friendly panel, powerful panel. Um, I don't think it has been seen before and definitely not in that small package. <laughs>